Lecture 5 starts right now. Congratulations. You have made it way into this semester. I'm telling you from this point forward, bang, it's going to be over really fast. And so hang in there. Dig in. Try to learn something rather than just checking the boxes and get 20 points here and 50 points there. Try to learn something that's going to, I hope, stick with you and help you in your career. Not just get a career, not just interviewing, not just pitching yourself like y'all worked on last week, but having a career where you're stinking successful. Because that's what I want for you. And that's a lot different. That's a different mentality than just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Just give me the box and I'll check it. Just tell me how to dance and I will, like I said in week one, dance monkey dance. This class is the highest level communication course on our campus, 28, is it 2850 or 2885? I think it's 2885. Who's in charge around here? We don't know, but 2800 course, that's pretty high. I think most of y'all by this point know that the numbers matter. This is a high sophomore level class. And y'all should be at this point, rather than just doing what I ask you to do, doing what I tell you to do, you should be, I hope, synthesizing ideas and looking at the path of your life, the path of your career, looking at your own communication skills, looking at your own, in this medium, body language, eye language, the voice, the tone, the word choices, all of that. You should be getting better. You should, at this point, be getting better. That's a, a higher calling and a higher challenge than just doing what I ask you to do. We talked a couple weeks ago about bifurcating, separating job and career. Job, you show up, your boss tells you what to do, and you do it. You roll into Starbucks and she says, do this, clean this, work the window, hey, you're on window. I've done that. I worked at some of y'all remember the company called The Gap. I worked at Gap in college, and I would roll in, and they, she, she would say, her name was Scarlett. Scarlett, the boss, would say, hey, I want you on sweatshirts. And I'd go fold sweatshirts and talk to customers. Hey, I want you on changing rooms during Christmas. Changing rooms were nuts. You're bringing and swapping out blue jeans, and you just do what you're told. It's that easy. And if you do it with a good attitude, and you do it well, they like you, they schedule you for more hours, and they try to promote you. They asked me to, they asked to promote me there within a month because I did what I was told. It wasn't that hard. You just do what you're told, and you move up. And that's a, that's a different situation. That's a job. You show up to Food City, they say push the buggies, you push the buggies, you do fine, you go home, you get your paycheck. I'm not preparing you for a job. My job is to prepare you for a career. And that's a different story. You are a, uh, a value, hopefully, a valuable, valuable member of whatever company, big, small, or medium, or you're running your own company. And you are preparing, I hope, to be preparing you for having a career where you're, you're in charge. You're not the boss. Nobody's ever really the boss. Even the boss, the boss at your company, the CEO or the president, they still have people that they answer to. I have a friend of mine that's got a business, a thriving business, and she still has to answer to the city of Johnson City, to building codes, building regulations. She still has things above her. So there's never a moment where you're free of someone above you. So that's not the point of this class. The point of this class is regardless of where you're at in this structure, where you're at in your age, your career, where you're at in reaching your goals, I'm going to say it again, that you're stinking good at it that you know how to talk to people, that you know how to type something out and present it in a way where you don't sound silly or you don't sound like a hillbilly. I, have to, I struggle with that. I grew up in Appalachia. I grew up in Boone's Creek. I've got a lot of slang and a lot of idioms, and I have to be careful with that when I'm in professional settings. I mean, we're all from the South, or most of us are. I think we're going to have an accent, but I can't say uh, fair to Midland if I'm in a professional environment, if I'm with friends or something or within my department and I know these folks and have relationships and they say, hey, how was that project? I go, well, it's fair to Midland. I can't say that if I'm in front of an audience that's not exactly from here. So that's things that I think about. That's a, there's a thousand other things 
just like that that we all should be dealing with. I want to talk to you about you today. <laughs> I want you to talk about you today. We open the semester with what do you want? How do you want to come across? What do you want in this world and how are you going to get there? What sort of person do you want to be? I'm not talking about your morals and your ethics. I'm saying, do you want to come across as gripey, as whiny? Do you want to come across as angry? Do you want to come across as somebody who's pretty sharp, that has their stuff together? I do not press record on that until I'm ready. I worked on this over the last couple of days. I worked on it again this morning. I went back through it. I think I told you all this in last week's videos, either this class or another class, that I go over and turn the refrigerator off because it goes, it's, it makes a, a loud noise. I do all the things that I can do. At the end of the day, I'm a pasty-faced bald man in a flannel shirt, but I've done the things that I can do to send a good message to y'all. And I think that's important. I think it's really important. It's not about being overly polished or being overly professional and not being a real person, but it is about being the best person that you want to be or about being the best version of yourself. I want you to take ownership of your career. That's a big step from here to here. I want you to take ownership where you're in charge. It's your life. It's your career. It's your education. That's a really big step from, uh, I just do what I just do. Just, just, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. I have a gazillion students that come into my classes and I'll say, why are you here? And they'll go, I don't know. But no, 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 Kyle, why are you here? I don't know. I, I signed up. I went to registration this summer. They just put me in here. Well, yeah, they just put me in here. And Kyle's not a bad guy. He's just not over here yet. Kyle, what are you going to do with your life? I don't know. Uh, my mom said to do something in the medical field, so I'm in the, the pre-nursing program. Why? I don't know. Somebody else told me to do that. Kyle, what do you want to learn this semester? I don't know. I want to get an A. I have to have an A. I make good grades. Just tell me what to do to get an A and I'll do it. It's fine, Kyle. Fine. Got a bazillion students like that. Some people make the jump. This is my career, my education. I have students that will get a hold of their educations. They'll dig on the internet. They'll dig on the school website. They will look at their program of study and they'll map it out and they'll think about it. Here, I'm going to take these courses and these courses, and then I'm going to jump over to ETSU. That's different. And they'll look at the ETSU program and they'll make decisions based on that ETSU program. And they'll have a little bit, not a long-term 40-year plan, but a 14-week plan. And they'll take ownership of their own career, their own educations, their own lives. That is a big jump. There's a lot of folks that never make that jump. They work jobs the rest of their lives, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But for y'all, I want you to take ownership of your career, of your education career, your lives, where you're headed and why, what you want, and how to get there. And that may sound preachy. That may sound like uh, motivation. It's not at all. It's not at all. It is, I believe, a paramount or a seminal building block of this class and of being successful. We worked in week two, maybe, with how to win friends and influence people. And that's an important text. That's an important piece of, or important building block of the communication environment, the professional environment, the interpersonal environment, and the soft skills environment. And there we come to the heart of this lecture, soft skills. The number one thing, catch this. Some of you all will catch this, and some of you all already have this on 1.5x, 1.75x, or 2x speed, and you're burning through to get to the questions. I get it. I've done the same thing. But for, the, for those of you that are taking ownership of your life, you're gonna, this, I hope, settles down in your noggin deep. The number one thing employers are looking for is soft skills. It's number one. The number one thing employers are looking for is soft skills. What is that? This interpersonal. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. How's things? Hey, 
Can you do this for me? Thanks. Hey, y'all did this. I need you all to do this. Can you just adjust a little bit for me? Thanks. Hey, boss, I can't come in tomorrow. I'm going to be a little bit late. I'm sorry. And it's all of this interaction. That's what employers want. You were probably told in high school that they just want you to get a degree. Degrees make money. Degrees don't get you jack diddly. They don't. They don't. We talked about that in week two or three. The short version, you walk into an interview, everybody has the same degree. Sorry, champ, you got to use soft skills. Your degree will get you in the door. Your soft skills will get you the job. More important than interviews and job hiring situations, I want you to be successful during the, the real part of, of the year. You only interview once every three, four, five, six years. The average person has eight jobs in their career right now, eight. So you're going to have eight important interviews in the rest of your life, but you'll have 8,000 days on the job. That's where soft skills come into being or come into play. It's not about checking boxes, but it is very much about awareness. How do you come across? And that's a word we haven't used much this semester. I think awareness may be one of the most important words that you learn in this class to get you thinking. Awareness. Should I wear this shirt into this meeting? Be aware of that. It's not about following rules. It's about, should I talk about this in this meeting? I was in a meeting with a, a group of faculty. There were 25 of us in there. It was a long meeting. We're two hours into this meeting. Everyone's tired. I'm aware of that. Everybody's hungry. I'm aware that it's 1245. We've been in there since 1045. Everybody is aware of what's going on. And yet one faculty member, one, keeps raising her hand and instead of talking about things that apply to the entire group, asks our boss, hey, I have a student that's international and their parents are not American citizens. And it's this little nuanced question. Important? Sure. Valuable? Of course. Does it matter in that moment? Heck no. You're wasting everybody's time. You're wasting mine, the bosses, and you're wasting your own time. Type that up, put it in a bleeping, excuse the language, but a bleeping email tomorrow and deal with that one-on-one. -on -one. She has no awareness that you probably shouldn't bring up nuances at the end of a meeting that's going to take 11 minutes, and it's not the end of the world, but it was about the end of that day. I was done. I was done with that meeting. That individual does that in meetings multiple times a year. No awareness. No social awareness. And the harsh truth is when, uh, when we have events or people going out to eat, this individual a lot of times doesn't get invited. I've seen that over the years. And I'm not being harsh on my co I love where I work. I love my coworkers. I love this individual. They're great. Super, and I mean this, super good individual but they operate with no social awareness, no social skills, and their soft skills are lacking. Their hard skills, pretty good. They know what they're doing. Your job is to work on your soft skills this semester. I want you to move away from, just tell me what to do. Tell me what dance you want me to dance, I'll do it. Hey, it's 20 points, how do I get my 20 points? He says, do this, 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 and this. Heck yeah, I got 19 of the 20. Heck yeah, I got an A. Just trying to get the A. Most students treat their education career like a job. Tell me what to do, I'll do it. I want you all to develop skills, to get better, to push and nudge yourself forward a little bit. My job is not to prepare you for a 30, 40 year career. I really think my job is to prepare you for the next step or the next couple steps and to work and hone you to get a little bit better. And then you'll pick it up and once you're two or three steps ahead, you'll work and then you'll help yourself get better. You're gonna be better in your 30s than you were in your 20s and you'll be better in your 40s than you were in your 30s. I hope this person will be the same person they were. The same person that stays in this box they showed up to class late in my classes. They turned in late work and they'll work a job. The rest, and they, they may be happier. They, they, they may be happier than all of us 
It doesn't mean they're a bad per or, or, or immoral person, but I'm challenging you to get to the, to the box where you're freaking good at what you do. Really good at what you do. Yes, I know the word is that, you're, that you do it well, but I like saying the word good. For this project, I want you to name three areas that you need to work on in your soft skills. Think about it. You cannot slam these out in 10 minutes. You need to think about this. I want you to tell us three things. It might be about your education career right now. Hey, in the classroom, I act bored. In the classroom, I sit and play on my phone and play on my phone and I, I, I don't give off good nonverbals to the leadership in this class or to my classmates. I dress like a slob. I need to work on that. I struggle with my words. I need to work on that. I struggle with public speaking, and I need to be able to talk in front of a small group, not a big formal, whatever. You can't slam this out in three minutes. I want you to think about this. Question one, name three areas that you need to work on, and tell us why. Don't just go, I need to work on my communication skills. Rather, I struggle in communication. I struggle on text. I get nervous when I talk one-on-one. -on -one. I'm fine with my friends and family, but when it's a moment where I'm trying to bang, flip the switch and be professional, at least I'm casual professional right now. This is called business casual. I can't make the switch to business casual. I drop the F-bomb too much, or I really struggle with being as natural as I want to be in these moments. So here's what and why. So question, question one, two, and three. There's three responses. Name these three areas. Tell us why. Explore all three of those. Tell us what. Tell us why. Tell us where you're at, where you need to be. But I really want you to explore yourself. We are trying to go from here to here. And you hopefully are in the middle. Find a next step. That's what this assignment is. Lecture five, name three areas and why that you need to work on. This is going to be graded on effort and thoughtfulness. College level, I have had to uh, explain or ask multiple of you, and this makes me cringe, makes my neck go down. I've had to ask multiple of you to capitalize the beginning of sentences. Woof! Woof! on that one. I, I don't know. I don't even know what to say at this point. It's a high level. You're supposed to be a junior next semester. It's a challenge. So effort and thoughtfulness, college level, and then respond to five other students. Have a discussion. Talk to them. Talk to them about what, what they say. Have a good discussion. You could do the bare minimum. That's totally fine. But you may want to respond to everybody, but a minimum of five. So three questions, respond to five. Can't wait to see what y'all have to come up with. Again, I hope you're having a great semester. Lecture 5 ends now.